on up there. I'm actually kind of scared right now. <laughs> I have the key to the church. I'm here all by myself. Should I go behind the curtain? Okay, the light keeps going on and off. I think I'm ready to come out here now. Oh my God, stop. There's a man just watching me outside. Jen. Oh my God, come stay on. Oh my God, stay on. Oh my God. Danger. Now that is looking absolutely demonic. I just heard something. <laughs> Can you feel me? No. Oh my God, no, please don't. Nobody now can get in and murder me. Scream. This is too, too active. I'm sorry, I need to go, I need to go. Hello? Hey guys, welcome to the Lord Crew Arms. I'm so excited to be here. This is my next, almost broke my neck there. I almost became a ghost that's haunting this place. I am in my next haunted adventure. I am in Blanchland in Northumberland. It's not that far from where I live actually. And I'm staying in the Lord Crew Arms, which has its own creepy ghost stories. But Blanchland itself has a very bloody history, so I'm very excited to delve into that with you all. But let's have a little look at where I'm staying. This is my cute little, cute little room. Almost as tall as the door. <laughs> I'm gonna try and keep my voice down as much as possible because I don't know if anyone else is staying here with me. Let's go inside. Ooh. Come on in, come on in. <laughs> so here we have my cozy room. I got the cozy room. That's literally what it's called on the booking is a cozy room. So I love it. It's just, it's just what you need, isn't it? It's just what you need. It's beautiful. Look at that fireplace. Look at the fireplace. Look at the mirror. Look at the mirror. It's old, but it, it, it looks great. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it looks awesome. I love this mirror too. The view outside too. The little square. Honestly, this is such a small village. You'll be able to get from one side to the next in like 20 minutes. And I think only around 100 people live here. So that's really interesting. It is so small, but so beautiful. And of course, I got myself a little bit of the bubbly. They asked, do you want Prosecco for the room when you check in? I was like, yes, let's do it now. It's only 3 p.m. We're on a ghostly adventure, okay? So these things are allowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold, it has all the ice on the bottom, although it's starting to melt. It just looks awesome. Oh my gosh, two glasses. I mean, 
one for me and one for the ghosties, am I right? Honestly, right, if you are new to my channel, you probably don't know that I am not a serious professional ghost hunter or anything like that. When I go to places like this, it's not serious, okay? I'm just here to have a fun time. If we do end up coming across, you know, paranormal activity in genuine things, then brilliant, that's awesome. But it's not my goal. <laughs> my goal here is to scare myself, to read something scary while I'm here too, and to share the ghost stories and the odd things that have happened in the places that I visit too. And there's plenty to talk about here as well. And it's uh, looking quite grim outside. I think it's gonna rain. Also, I forgot my flashlight. So I don't know what I'm gonna do on the nighttime when I visit the graveyard in the Abbey, but we'll just have to wing it. So yeah, let's open this. Prosecco, oh my God, it looks so good. And we're gonna go on the best adventure tomorrow. I cannot wait to show you everything. Oh God. If you hear that, there's like a lot of banging because the windows are so old that they don't really stay firm. So when it's windy, it does bang a little bit. So bear that in mind going forward. It's probably not a ghost, it's just the wind. Honestly, I got an email because they first said, oh, we've got tables for two and the Prosecco got two glasses and things like that in the confirmation email. But in my original booking, I was like, no, it's just me. I'm by myself, it's an, it's one one adult. They like had to message me like, are you sure you want a bottle of Prosecco? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> why wouldn't I? And then they said, oh, is there a special occasion? I was like, no, <laughs> should there be? <laughs> oh, I love it here, honestly, this is so nice. Blocky ears, this might be the scariest thing to happen in this video. <clears throat> I'm ready, I'm so ready to talk ghosts with Prosecco. Oh my God. Honestly, you've just got to treat yourself every now and then, am I right? Usually I have Chambord to mix it with, just to make it taste a little bit nicer for me. But let's just try it. Mm, that is really nice Prosecco, actually. That does not need Chambord. That is very, very nice. Mm, we'll have to get another bottle of this, I think. Oh my gosh, I didn't show you the bathroom. The bathroom is amazing. Look at this. Isn't this so pretty? It's such a nice, cute, little, cozy bathroom. And look at that, look at the shower. But I love this. I love this, can you see it? It's like a little pirate wheel. I love it! So Blanchland itself was pretty much founded in 1165. So gosh, that like 900 years ago or more. And it was essentially an abbey. It was mainly uh, Blanchland Abbey and the village sort of grew around that from what I believe, like from what I've gathered online. Blanchland Abbey was a monastery for a community of pre Canons? <laughs> a religious order from Premontry, Northeast France. So the canons were monks and they wore white habits. So essentially, I don't know if anyone's watched my 30 East Drive video, but there was a ghost story there of the black monk of Pontefract. And now we seem to have the white monks of Blanchland. And no matter where I look on these ghostly adventures, there's a monk. So it looks like we're gonna have some dealings with more monks in this video, which honestly scares me. But there was a specific moment in time in Blanchland when something really bloody happened, which I'm not gonna mention now, I'll mention later on, but stay tuned for that because that is the the main ghost story, I guess, of the area. So the Lord Crew Arms itself also began around about the time of Blanchland in 1165. There were so many monks coming in and out of the place. And in the 1990s, apparently in the Radcliffe room, I'm in the Etherington room, so it didn't happen in this room, thank God. But in the Radcliffe room, there was an American tourist who was staying there. And this tourist was awakened in the middle of the night to the sight of a white monk at the bottom of their bed. She reached out to touch the monk, but it disappeared before her eyes. It like vanished into thin air. And this sense of calm and peace washed over this American tourist. And she said she wasn't scared at all when this happened. I beg to differ. If that happened to me, I would be running out the room. I'm not gonna lie. I'd be running back to Newcastle, even if it's a 40 minute drive, potentially a five hour run, I'm going. And while there are more monk ghost stories I'm gonna tell you about later, there is the ghost of Dorothy Foster, who is the main presence of the Lord Crew Arms. In 1715, her brother Tom became a leader in the Jacobite Uprising. And Tom was captured, he didn't put up much of a fight, and he was taken to London to be executed. Now his sister Dorothy, who resided in the Lord Crew Arms, she went all the way to London 
to break him out of jail and she disguised herself as a maid, got inside and managed to get her brother out. How she did that, I have no idea. When they returned here to the Lokra Arms, she hid him in the big fireplace that is, I think, downstairs. There is this priest hall or something and she hid him in there. And after a short time of his hiding here, he got smuggled to France. So Dorothy was like happy that he was alive, but it was clear that she missed her brother. So then she eventually died in the Low Crow Arms. Ever since, people have seen an apparition of her and she sometimes watches over you as you're sleeping. And when you wake up, she asks you, can you give this message to my brother? And then she disappears. She's been mainly spotted in the Bamber room, but you know, what's to stop a ghost from going through a wall or a flow, you know what I mean? And she wants her brother to know that it is now safe for him to come home and he is no longer exiled. And that's so sad to me, the fact that she misses her brother that much, that that's what she wants the guests here to know and to give the message to him. It, it is so sad, it's, it's really sad. So yeah, Dorothy Foster is like the main ghost that seems to haunt here. But there are, you know, several white monks that appear every now and then too. And the Blanchland Abbey and Graveyard is literally just right next door to the Low Crow Arms. So, you know, we are pretty much on graveyard soil, essentially, it's right there. Just like when I went to the cabin last year in the graveyard and the church was right behind it. It's the exact same situation here, except it's much closer. I'm already gonna have to top up the Prosecco. Wow. So as I mentioned before as well, I'm not just here to check out the ghost stories or to explore the place, which is definitely something I'm I'm going to be doing. It's what I'm most excited about with these ghostly adventures. But I am going to be reading something spooky as well to tide me over, because that's what I do. That's what I do. Firstly, how gorgeous is this book sleeve? My friend Rachel from Happy Go Lovely Sleeves, she does book sleeves and they are the most beautiful, spookiest things I've ever seen. I will leave a link to her shop down in the description box if you wanna check it out. But I I had to bring this. I had to bring this. I love it so, so much. I also have this spooky ghostly one as well, which I use for my equipment. I have my batteries and my memory cards in here, but obviously it, it's meant for books, but you can use it for anything as well. But this is the one I love the most, but I do have my books in here. I will let you know what I'm reading. So the main one that I wanna try and read while I'm here, and it's short enough that I think I could finish it potentially tonight or tomorrow morning, is Mosaic by Catherine McCarthy. I mainly picked this one because it looks like it's set in a village similar to this one, and we follow a main character who fixes stained glass windows in churches. And I think some incident happened that one of the stained glass windows got smashed, and she has to try and repair it and put the pieces back together. But as she's putting the pieces back together, something sinister is unfolding. What? I don't know, but I love this cover. It's a little bit spooky, a little bit scary. Yeah, a stained glass window in the 13th century church. And you know, I'm visiting a, is it a 12th century church? 11, yeah, I think it's the 12th century. <laughs> 12th century church that I'm going to be visiting, so round about the same area, it'll look pretty much the same. Things are not what they appear to be in the seemingly cosy hamlet of Bilbury, and I'm in the hamlet of Blanchland, and it's just so lovely, but we're not here for loveliness, we're here for scariness, okay? And then if I have time, I want to try and read Subcutanean 30287 by Aaron A. Reed. This is the really weird book that there is no two copies of in the world, I think, although I don't think that's quite correct, but there are so many multiple versions of this story. If you read it, it's likely that someone else has read a totally different version of it. But there is a senior college student who finds this abandoned house and goes inside and there is a basement that never seems to end. It says that this is a special subcutanean made for traditional retailers. The original book is a permutational novel that changes each time it's printed. This is seed 30,280. So I think there are probably multiple copies of this, but it's like originally just a, a book that is different every time. Not choose your own adventure, it's just printed differently. I don't know how that is or how that works, but hopefully we'll find out. I'm only here for two nights, so I might not get to both of these books, but if not, I still want to read both of them regardless. And I'm excited. Let's uh, cheers to another spooky journey.
there's a man just watching me outside, like at the fence. And I don't know why. He was just watching me. I'm kind of scared. I don't know if there's anybody in here, actually. <laughs> Apart from that freaky monk, I got a fright when I walked in. How scary is that? I thought they were people as well. Watch me go around that corner, I bet you there's people there. <laughs> Wow, well, okay, I am in here by myself. Oh, it's a little bit creepy, I'm not gonna lie. I'm in a, in a village in the middle of nowhere, and I'm currently in the church. That, and there was that man. There was a man at the, fe at the, the fence outside the church, and he was just watching me, just watching me walk in. He was just sitting there, just like looking, and I'm just like, stop looking at me, please. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, he's just gonna walk in at any minute. God, I'm actually kind of scared right now. <laughs> actually, I think now is a great time to tell you about the white monks of Blanchland that got, well, they met a fairy grizzly, bloody end. I don't know what year this was in, but it was definitely hundreds of years ago. There were the Scots, they were trying to raid the village and the monks of Blanchland, they were praying for a miracle. They were praying for God to intervene. And just then, a fog descended on Blangeland and protected the, the little village from being found. So the Scottish raiders didn't find the village and they were starting to go away. And the monks thought that it was God who had intervened and they were celebrating the fact that they weren't going to be murdered. And they started to ring the abbey bells in celebration and the sound alerted the raiders of the exact location of where the village was. And the raiders ended up finding the church and murdered the monks. And there was a lot of people who died because of it. So it's said that the monks, the white monks of Blanchland, are typically seen around the church and especially in the graveyard. And sometimes when the abbey bells ring, it's kind of like their death knell. It's the fact that anyone could walk in right now and I would be none the wiser. Well, I would probably hear the front door. I just hope that man's gone. Oh God, that monk. The fact that they have to have a statue there is really, really scary. And I have my little lantern from home because, you know, oh, is he not scary or what? Oh. But this is kind of what they would look like in, well, the time that the white monks got murdered here, and I hear voices. <laughs> the bodies of the monks, by the way, were apparently put in an unmarked grave, like in one grave, and it's said that this actually is where they've been buried, not confirmed, but it's very likely that that's where they lie. So, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I wonder if the grave of Dorothy Forster is here in this graveyard. It probably is, but I haven't read online like where 
she would be buried. But this really does remind me of the graveyard, of the cabin that I went to last year. It is this graveyard where it's said that the white monks of Blanchland haunt and they are usually spotted roaming around these gravestones, which uh, it's kind of scary. I do really want to come here at night, but I don't have a flashlight. I could use my phone, but I kind of use my phone for the ghost tube app, but we'll see, we'll see how we get on. Okay guys, my camera died already, but I found this little, I don't know what this is. It's like a little shed thing in the graveyard and the door's wide open. I'm kind of scared to look. So let's look together. Okay. Old churchyard tool shed. Shed is empty and members of the public are asked not to try to enter, okay. I will respect that. I'm not coming in here. I will respect it. But this is, this is kind of scary though. They mustn't be able to close the door and that's why they have a warning on. So people don't just like walk in, maybe. It does say the members of the parochial church council cannot be held responsible if this advice is not followed. So I guess, I mean, you could go into it. It's just advised that you shouldn't. <laughs> but I'm a good boy. I'm gonna listen to the sign and not enter. But I think it would be interesting to come back here tonight or tomorrow night to have a little look around. I also want to ask as well, because at the hotel reception, she said, I asked like, what time is the Abbey open till? And she said, until 4 p.m. It's now like 5.30. And she said, but we have the key. So if you want the key, I can give you the key so that you can go in. And I'm wondering, is there a limit? You know, the latest that I can go in? Because I think it would be really cool to go into the church at night and maybe try and read in there. Maybe do a little bit of paranormal investigating in there maybe as well. So I'll ask about that. I'll ask like, what's the latest I can go in the church till and get the key for it. I'll, at least then I'll know I'm in there by myself and nobody can just wander in. I think it would be so interesting to spend a few hours at night in there because it is a little bit scary. Churches scare me. <laughs> sort of graveyards. Why am I here? I'm gonna go back to the room now, finish off the Prosecco, I think, and I have my first meal tonight at six. I think it's about 5.30 now, I think. I got my phone's there, so I can't tell, but I think it's about 5.30ish, so I'd better get ready for that, have something to eat, see if I can come back here tonight to read and investigate. They look like monks. <laughs> Starting to see them everywhere.
front seat at all, but guys, I've been given the key. I've been given the key to the church. Oh my God, I can't see anything though. <laughs> Oh my god! But I'm, I've been allowed for the next like hour and a half to go into the church and by myself and just see if like anything happens. Oh my god! This is scary. This is so scary. You can't even see anything. There's a gravestone. Yes, the church, but you can't see a single thing. It's that dark. God, I hope there's light in here. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Here's the key. I've got the, I've got the church key. Oh my god! That's uh. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. This is so scary. Oh my god. Okay, a light's come on. A light's come on. Okay, it's perfect. At the Low Crow Arms, I was just like, you know, I love spooky things. Like, what's the latest I can go to the church? And she said, well, I'm here till 10 if you want the key to the place. I was like, yeah. So I have the key. I have the key to the church. I'm here all by myself. I don't think anyone can get in, but I could be wrong. But I am a little bit scared because there are those ghost stories about the monks. And again, like this guy, he does scare me. Like, why do we have this here? I just... I have this vision of this monk just looking up like that. Like, how scary would that be? Oh my gosh, but the fact that I'm here on my own, I'm so scared, I'm gonna make sure this is closed. Well, that's not. Okay, I did not leave that wide open, okay. Okay, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna close it. I don't know how to close it. <laughs> I don't know how to close it. It's locked. It's definitely locked now. Okay, perfect. Nobody now can get in and murder me. Shall we turn off more of the lights, actually? I can turn off more of the lights. Let's, let's make it really dark. Let's do it. Let's see. Oh, maybe I should leave those ones on and have those lights off. You know, just like keep the one above the door on. Maybe keep this on, you know, just cause. But then, oh my god, it's so dark, I can't see a thing. I can't see an actual thing. Oh, it's so scary, okay. Um, I do have my lantern. I literally can't believe I'm here by myself. I have my lantern, so I'll turn the lantern on. Should we have a little look around while it's dark? I don't think you guys can see anything though. That's the only thing. It's like so atmospheric right now, and it looks amazing, but I don't have the camera capabilities to show you everything. If we get to Ghost Tube and do a little bit of investigating, maybe... <laughs> Sorry, there was a step. There was a step and I didn't see it. Okay, I thought maybe it's a bit too early to do some paranormal investigating, but I think we're just gonna have to go for it. Okay, before I even really started, I'm gonna have to try and get a screenshot of it so they can see it. I literally just opened the app and then the first thing that came through was, how do you feel? Um, how do I feel? I feel scared. I do, I feel really scared right now. I don't know why I'm doing this. I can't see anything, anything at all. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, how is it going? How's it been? And I feel like while I'm trying to walk around to see if we can see anything or like if anything- Can you feel me? Not fucking yet. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't swear, I'm sorry. But um, I can't know. You should try harder, I guess. Oh my God, that's actually terrifying. Can, how do you feel and then can you feel me? No, no. While you make yourself known, like feel free to touch me if you want to. That's Amber. Actually, Amber, who's Amber? Uh, or is this your name? Is this your name, Amber? I, I don't know. But I thought, while well, this is so active already. Like, I've only just opened the app. How's it going, essentially? How's it going? What are you up to? Like, you know, I'm called Gavin, and I'm here for two nights. This is my first night. Maybe I could come back tomorrow, maybe. But I just wanted to ask some questions, say, how are you doing? What's going on? Can you uh wait while i let you guys know exactly what i've been thinking of the book i'm reading so mosaic i'm about 75 pages in 75 77 and i'm really enjoying it 
I love the fact that we have a Hamlet that's just like this one, honestly. It's, what's it called again? It's like, begins with B, Bilbury, I think, which is further down south than this one. But I, I'm really enjoying the book. I think it's really good. It's really making me feel very atmospheric and makes me feel like I'm here. It's so interesting, the fact that we have this woman who's trying to make these stained glass windows become fixed again and she's gathering the pieces of it and it's really interesting it's so interesting I'm like how is she going to be able to put it all together essentially and nothing really too scary has happened just yet but it's getting there it's getting there i'm not going to do any spoilers in this video as well by the way so don't be worried about spoilers i'll not give them but i do want to make you intrigued enough to read it so do you think that book sounds any good so far do you I really wish I had my flashlight. Oh, perfect, there we go. Oh, yay, okay. Let's uh, get a little bit further into the church. It's not a very big church, is it? It's not very big. You've gone very quiet. You were so loud before when I first started. Like, I can't believe you were asking, like, how do you feel before I, before I even managed to click record. It's bright. It's bright? Or oh, do you want me to turn this off? Do you want me to turn this off? Okay, I'll do that. Or do you mean the camera? Is the camera too bright? Oh, please, if you can clarify, that would be amazing. Camera or lantern? Let me know, and I'll turn one of them off. I can't turn both of them off because I won't be able to see shit. I mean, I won't be able to see things. I heard about the white monks of Blanchland, how people see white monks every now and then especially after what happened to you. You know what happened to yourselves, don't you? Of course you do. I don't need to repeat the story. Everyone watching this has already heard the story about how the Scots were trying to raid Blanchland. Oh, pardon me. Doom. Doom, oh my God. This is the second time Doom's come through for me. And I do feel like there's a ticking time clock. Ticking time clock, is that right? A ticking clock on my life, I'm not gonna lie. I do feel like I'm in danger. I feel like I'm in danger, girl. Despite how scary it looks, I'm so enamored by this place. Churches do scare me, but, you know, what's up there? What's up there? Is this a monk? Is this how you guys used to look back in the day? When the Scots raided the place and murdered you all? Just backing away because I'm rather scared right now of it. And why, why? Just why? Oh my God, I'm dying for a wee. You said it's bright before, what's bright? My future? <laughs> You've gone quiet again. Look around, everybody on mute. In the attic. Oh my good grief. Oh, I just fell again. I need to look where I'm going. You're probably right. But oh my gosh, every single place I go to, I get called names. Annoying. Go away. And I can check the phone. Imbecile. Annoying. Everybody bullies me. Every ghost I see. Or don't say. <laughs> they just call me all of the names under the sun. They call me an idiot. They say I'm stupid. Oh my gosh, like why? Why? So mean. I love the fact that I said idiotic. Wait, was that before or after I fell down the stairs? Because that seems like it was almost like a premonition. They kind of knew that was gonna happen. Idiotic. You know what's idiotic? Is ringing a bell after the raiders have gone. Did you want them to find you? I wouldn't do a thing like that, I'm just saying. I couldn't pay me. Whew. I really need to pay. I paid before I left the Lord Crew Arms as well. I paid before I left, but I need it again, like, so badly. I drank so much wine. Okay, so I've just been for some dinner. It was so nice. I had, like, a white crab starter which was beautiful on sourdough bread and then i had like roast duck for my main oh my god that was beautiful too and then i had a lemon something for my dessert 
and I had nearly a whole bottle of wine. Didn't realize I wouldn't be able to get through the whole thing. Oh, is there a toilet? Is there a toilet here, do you know? I don't think there is, you know. I haven't seen any toilets. Oh my God. Oh, I'm literally gonna piss myself. I mean, weigh myself, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't believe I needed this much. <laughs> I broke the seal. I broke... There's not that much activity back here. Shall we go back to the main section of the church? I don't know what you call it. Is it like a pew? I take it you're not a fan of Beyonce. But I literally 10% battery. I'm gonna see if I can get the key again tomorrow night so that I can fully charge my phone beforehand. See if I can do that because my phone will not last. And you know what? I've had some good activity so far. How do you get up there? How do you get up there? Are there stairs? Or something? Oh, oh no. It's a piano. It doesn't work. How do I get through? How do I get through? Even that, it's like... Stupid. Oh my God, why? Why? Every time. Every time. Why are you calling me stupid for? What have I done? What have I done? I swear, I just get bullied every single time. Ow. I know I'm a little bit drunk, but I'm not stupid. Oh my God. Wow. So this is how you get here. Okay. Okay. Hey, it's a rave. <laughs> um. Iron. Iron, iron. Um, don't know what you mean, babes. Do you need, I, I need more iron to stop me from needing to pee so much, maybe? Is that what it is? <laughs> Can you even say anything else now? I don't think so, wow. I just can't believe I'm in here by myself at night. I wanna be here longer, but I'm gonna pee myself. <sighs> and my phone's gonna die. Oh my God, oh, oh I can barely move. I can barely move, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, but I haven't seen any ghosts or heard anything. Just you, you little bully, through this app. You know what, I think you're doing this to me, aren't you? You're making me really need to pee. Because this is natural, I literally just went and I'm, I'm gonna pee myself. Anyway, I'm enjoying this so far. Very, very good. Oh, you can leave your name in comments. Oh, there's people who have left, you know, all of their names and things. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, okay, let's let's leave mine. 28th, 9th, 23. Oh my God, I'm gonna piss myself off. Gavin, Hetherington, and uh, Country is UK, but I'll just put how to train your Gavin YT YouTube. Comments, I need a piss, oh. um, scary, but lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. Although the ghosts themselves are not lovely. Why do they think they can just bully me? Isn't this so cool too, like the string, like the rope, goes all the way up there, wow. Do you wanna say like in the light? I don't wanna go back just yet because I don't want them to think that I got too scared at the reception of the low crew arms, but. At least you can see a little bit better now. It's just... I think that's a, a big piano, but the piano didn't work when I tried it. Oh, what's this? It's like a little... Oh, it opens. It's like a little basin. Okay, before I go, actually, I just discovered this. I think this is the abbot's tomb. So even though it's just, like, right here, it does say on this plaque here that this is the abbot's tomb. So I think this is where the abbot is buried. 
literally right here. Wow. I didn't realize it would be literally right there. Oh, that's a little bit scary. I wonder if it was the abbot who was calling me stupid and idiotic then. I didn't really get a chance to let you guys know what I was actually thinking of this book. I think I should be a better booktuber and let you know. I also have my pyjamas on and this is the Lord Crow Arms on dressing gown, which is awesome. I'm trying to keep my voice low for whoever is in the other room. But I really enjoy the fact that it feels like I could be living this book right now. Just in terms of setting, we have the church, an ancient Cotswold stone building complete with narthex and bell tower, but it is the graveyard itself that steals my breath. Scattered headstones peep from behind knee-high grass, which we went to a graveyard today with knee-high grass. Well, it wasn't exactly knee-high, but nearly. Some of the stones leaning towards each other as if conspiring. That's exactly how I felt going through that graveyard. And I just love the description of this little place. It seems very spooky, which is weird, isn't it? When you think of a really cozy and lovely looking village, you think, yeah, cozy and nice. Cozy and nice. Cozy and nice. I don't know what that was. It sounded like a sound from the bathroom. I don't look. It seems like the doors, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna go there. I think I'm still a little bit tipsy. Anyway, it still seems a little bit sinister. It still seems, you know, like some odd things are happening. But as I said before, nothing outwardly scary has happened yet. It's very subtle. Very subtle. And I am halfway through. So something has to pick up now. I still don't know anything about this window. I mean, it is weird because the church itself... People don't really know what the window is supposed to look like, and it might be something scary. Other than that, yeah, like, there are certain records of it, but it doesn't seem to give a lot of information. It seems, like, shrouded in mystery. So this church, it really has piqued my interest. So I'm excited to dive back into it. I might read some more before bed. I'm going to take this to the coffee shop that's just by here called The White Monk. So I really want to go there. It looks really quaint and really nice. Everything is called The White Monk. They're everywhere. I can't get rid of them. Good morning! I've been for breakfast. It was absolutely delightful and included as well, which is such a relief. And I have to say, this place has stolen my heart. The service was beautiful, the breakfast was beautiful. Currently in my room with one of the homemade coffees, you know, that I like to do when I visit hotels or inns or pubs or wherever I stay. I like to try the coffee that they have on offer. And I haven't tasted it just yet because it's still quite hot but I will do so in just a sec. Today's agenda, since this is my final full day, which I'm so sad, I, I need more time. I need more time. I was a little bit hungover this morning, so I'm not going to drink today. I might have like a glass of wine with my meal tonight, but just one glass. I'm not doing what I did last night. I didn't realize the wine last night would be so sweet, like really, really sweet. It was kind of hard to have, but it was still nice and I still drank like three quarters of the bottle, but I did also have the Prosecco when I first arrived here too. So yesterday was a special day, okay? This morning, since it's still quite early, I'll finish my coffee. I want to go down to the river, the River Derwent, which, because this, again, this place is so small, it's just like a two minute walk down the, uh, down the street, and there is a bridge, and there are some, like, ghost stories there too, which if it's not too windy, I will try and tell you about later when I'm there. And then I want to go to the White Monk Tea Room, which is just up there. It's near the Abbey. And I want to go in there. It closes at four. So I'll spend just a couple of hours down at the river and then go to the White Monk Tea Room, which sounds so cute and lovely. Guys, I love it here. I do. Blanchland is just so 
pretty. There's also a level of spookiness as well, you know, especially when it gets dark and the lights outside turn on. Ooh, it's so great, so atmospheric. But yeah, I'm gonna try and finish the mosaic book at the river and maybe start my next book at the tea room. I think that'd be pretty cool. It's a little bit loud with the river so I don't know if you can hear me right now but yeah that bridge there that bridge is the bridge between the borders of County Durham and Northumberland so as you can imagine with borders and things it's a kind of ghostly energy is kind of associated with the area and it, it it's a really nice bridge <laughs> it's a nice bridge but sometimes the ghost of the abbot is seen walking along there and I don't think we'll see him today. I also wanted to read down here if possible, but there's just nowhere to sit really. So it's, yeah, it's interesting though. It's lovely. It's such a lovely little place. But I'm gonna go down that path there. I don't know if you can see it. There's like a, a path that way. So I'm gonna see where that goes and we'll see if there's anywhere that I can sit and read, but it, it's absolutely stunning. It is so windy. <laughs> Wow. Oh my gosh. You can see the abbey over there. That's where we were last night. Lots and lots of sheep. Lots of sheep. And look at those trees over there. We really are in the middle of nowhere. This area is just so remote. I, I can't believe it's been here this entire time. You could get lost in those trees. All of the sheep as well. Hey sheep. Hey sheep. <laughs> A bit quieter down here as well. So nice. I mean maybe maybe I could sit here on, on a wall with the river here. Maybe that'll be nice. Let's keep exploring though. There might be a better place. But it is a little bit creepy being here on my own. Nyara River. <laughs> It was just a tree. <laughs> I'm a little bit paranoid. I know I seem brave, especially since I did the church last night, but I was a little bit drunk, so I felt brave. But I am on edge. I am on edge. It is still a little bit scary because anything could happen. So, yeah, just always looking behind my shoulder, looking around, and movement. Yeah, I'm by myself in a bit of a forest walkway next to a river. It's, it's scary. Bad things can happen. Okay guys, I've walked quite far. I don't even know if I'm in Blangeland anymore. And I haven't seen anybody else walking down here. So, like, 
are we allowed to go down here? I imagine so. It's like a, a, a path. But, oh god, I need to be careful here. Whew. But yeah, I haven't seen anyone. I'm just going further and further. I, like, does it stop? Oh, this is the part where I can actually sort of get close to the river. And of course there have been some awful reports of this river taking people's lives over the years, which is really, really sad. First I need to see if I can get any signal and then see how far I actually walked. Probably not even that far. It doesn't give any indication of the next place, like where the next place is. So I think I could just continue on and just continue on, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I should probably head back. I thought maybe there was somewhere I could sit and read, but we might have to go to the tea house, the White Monk tea house, and do the reading there. So we'll probably stay there for a few hours. But yeah, there's just, I, I don't want to sit on the ground here. I don't want to sit on the floor. So, and also, it's really eerie just being here on my own and nobody around. Anything could happen. There are so many gravestones toppled over in this. It's not very well cared for, but these are very old tombstones. I wanted to see if I could find Dorothy Forster's gravestone, and I still have yet to find her. I have looked at pretty much every grave 
and I cannot see Dorothy Forster at all. But I did actually on the kind of monument at the very front of the church, it is um, about the young men who went to World War I and died between 1914 and 1918 and somebody called Tom Forster is on that but it's definitely not the same Tom Forster who Dorothy hid. So Forster must be such a common name, like such a common family name here or maybe it's just like the same family and they've just always lived here which is why I'm... I mean a lot of these gravestones are unkempt and not very well looked after a lot of them they are dating back from like 1700s, a lot of them. A lot of them are 1800s. There are some more recent ones too, so this is still a used graveyard, but just not really seeing any Dorothy Foster. So she did die here, but I guess she mustn't have been buried here, or she is buried where one of the tombstones are a little bit too worn down to actually be able to read it. So... I just wanted to pay my respects, you know. There is this ghost story or like urban legend about her at the Lord Crow Arms, so I just wanted to just show my respect, really. You're probably gonna see so many fingerprints on this now because I did finish it in the White Monk Tea House and I got food all over it. I can't help it. So it's not gonna look as fresh as usual, but I did finish this and I did like it. I liked it a lot, actually. I'll settle for a four star because I think being here really does add to the ambience and the atmosphere of this book and it really helped me get into it. There was a scene, again like no spoilers, there was a scene when the main character is in the church on her own and she only has like 12% battery left and I was like this is taking me back to last night. You know there were so many like little touches of the story and touches of the setting that just reminds me of where I am right now. It's almost like I could be living this. I just can't repair stained glass windows. Speaking of stained glass windows though, I do think what lets this book down a little bit is an over-reliance on trying to convince us that the profession of the main character is believable. I do believe the author did a lot of research and it's not inherently a bad thing to include so much detail in how the main character goes about fixing these stained glass windows and things, but it got to a certain point where, like, we were almost getting a step-by-step -step process to the point where I think I could repair a stained glass window by myself, and I think that just, uh, it, it kind of bordered into boredom as I was reading, because I was just skimming at that point. I was like, okay, I don't really need to know this. I believe she can do this. I don't need to be told how she does this. So I also had a question like, who is she trying to convince, as in like the main character, who is she trying to convince me that she can do this or herself? Or like, it kind of broke down some of the believability because it felt like an overall alliance on trying to convince us that she could do it. You know, it's like, just do your damn job. I will say like this whole book, the majority of it is just her repairing this window and she is getting little insights into this church that she can't find the original name for and all these little nuggets of tension that we do get. It's not really overtly scary and then you get to the final two chapters and it's like balls to the wall crazy essentially and I really like that but there's another part of me that's like I, it, it was so different and it just could have benefited I think from fleshing that ending out just a little bit more. Saying that, really enjoyed my time reading this. Again, really love the atmosphere. So I'm gonna give it a four stars just for that alone. I know that's like a really high rate and actually it probably should be a 3.5, but we're going along with a four star. So now that I have done that, I still have another night here. So I'm gonna start Subcutanean 30287 by Aaron A. Reed. I also think this might be queer. I think this might actually have gay characters in this because it says Orion, who is the main character, loves his best friend Nico and the two of them find a secret basement in their rambling old off-campus house. Another secret to share, an adventure to maybe at last bring them closer together. So this could be a potential gay love story. I'll probably get stricken down in this church when I'm going to be reading it later. I want to see if I can get the key to the church again tonight and actually read in there. Doubt I'll finish this one in one night though because it is a bit longer than the last one but we're gonna give it a good go. I do have dinner in 25 minutes. I'm not gonna have a bottle of wine this time, okay? I know my limits and I don't want to cut my stay in the church tonight short if I am allowed in. So one glass, one glass, maybe two at a push.
Okay guys, I'm back in the church and I totally forgot that I actually bought this ages ago because I wanted it for my paranormal investigations and it's a red light. It's a red light so I could use this as a sort of flashlight but also I found this in the Lord Crow Arms in the drawer and it was there all along. I have the keys to this place for the next two hours. So I'm definitely gonna last longer than I did yesterday because yesterday I needed to pay so badly. So as long as that doesn't happen again tonight, then it should be a good one. So let's go to the main section of the church where all the seating is. And I wanna try and read for maybe 30 to 45 minutes. Sorry, I thought I should saw a shadow. Maybe like 30 to 45 minutes. And just to like get a sense of the place before I start, you know, throw myself into just asking questions and seeing if anything ghostly is happening. But also, I'm a, a little bit tipsy. I have had another bottle of Prosecco, but that should be fine. Oh my God. Now that is looking absolutely demonic. This is just absolutely demonic. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this feels like devil worship. It's not, I promise. <laughs> this looks so silly. Okay, I have the subcutaneous book. I'm gonna start it, I think. And I am gonna see how far I get. Probably in the next 30, 45 minutes, I'll see what's going on. I wanna investigate a little bit, go outside, you know, get a bit fresh air, see if anything happens. But yeah, uh, let's uh, let's read in a church. I just heard something. It sounded like a book dropping. Hello? I know I just dropped my book, but that was before that. It sounded like it came from here. This must have fell. Come on, prayer. I'm pretty sure I saw it on here. It must have just fell off. Jesus Christ. There is a little bit of a breeze. I don't know if it's coming from here, but maybe it knocked that off. Jesus Christ, that gave me such a heart attack. Uh, and also, there's the window with the, the crack in it that I, I pointed out before. Maybe that did something. I don't know, but... <sighs> oh my god, that literally gave me a heart attack. Is that table even steady? Okay, yeah, it's pretty fucking steady. Me heart. Me heart. <sighs> I can't even remember what page I was on. It was just the book falling, so I can I can get back to reading. Oh my god. 
Oh God. Honestly, I, I can't even remember what page I was on. We still have like another 25 minutes of reading, I think, so. Oh my God. Yeah, I couldn't really concentrate anymore <laughs> on this. I got 56 pages into it, and I am liking it so far. It's given very House of Leaves vibes. So Orion, he is the main character, he's gay, and we love that for him, don't we? Yeah, best friend Nico is seemingly straight, but potentially there's a love interest there. And they actually rent a, a, an off-campus house and it was very cheap, so that's why they go for it. And they have like other house mates and stuff. But there is a basement that is seemingly bigger than the actual house, which is very odd. But it does remind me of like House of Leaves. You know how the house on the inside is bigger than the house on the outside, like when they measure it or something like that. It's been a, about two years since I read House of Leaves, but it's given those kinds of odd vibes. And I'm sorry if I keep looking around. I'm just so paranoid. <laughs> I was a lot more brave yesterday than I am today. But yes, I like the descriptions of this basement. It looks, well, it feels like very odd. Like there are different rooms. There's odd furniture. There's a fridge that's like six foot deep and stuff like that. So that's so interesting. And I just want to know more about like the actual, uh, what's the word? Like the actual structure of this book. It does say the book you're holding is just one version of the story. If you're curious, you can find out in the back of the book how to get your own unique copy, which might include words, sentences, even entire scenes that don't appear in this version or play out in different ways. And get your own unique copy. So it lets you know, because I did get this off Amazon, so there are multiple versions of this seed of the book. But yeah, you can get a... Yeah, it's rendered in millions of different ways. This was a fixed copy generated for sale on traditional platforms, but your purchase entitles you to... Sorry, I thought I heard something. <laughs> this copy entitles you to a free digital copy with a unique seed number that will never be reused. So there are unique versions of the book. And you can even send an email to the person with this specific passphrase, which I'll not say out loud, it's a secret, about this copy. Several hundred places in the master copy of Subcutaneum where text can vary. Here is a sampling of some of the decisions made by the rendering code when the copy was generated. So your narrator was a bit more optimistic than the gnome. Some proper nouns in this copy that might be different in others include semblances, grip monkeys, and, oh, you have, oh, okay, I need, I need to stop reading that because I think there are spoilers in that. <laughs> but it's really interesting to know that there are just so many different unique versions of this book. This isn't long, it's only 219 pages. I don't think I can read anymore. Yeah, though, I'm so paranoid. I know that book just fell by itself and that's fine, but it's kind of shaking me up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. The lovely person at the Low Crew Arms who gave me the key, Charlie, I'm not gonna let them be disappointed by me coming back early again like I did the last time. I need to see this through. Look at it, oh, it's so scary. I just like shouldn't be here in general. I'm a homosexual. I've never done a reading sprint in a church before. It's definitely different. I'll try and do some more investigating because I feel like my energy is here now and I feel like I I'm not rushing anything. If there's anything here, then maybe they feel more comfortable talking to me. And again, like, I'm not trying to prove anything. I don't know if it's real or not, but it's fun. Let's do it. Let's turn some lights off. Let's investigate. Right, okay. I am going to turn off the final light and we are gonna investigate. I, this is working, I think, so. Oh my God, let's do this. Why, I do not know. <sighs> Oh my god. <laughs> I'll put the red light there on the monk. I think that's very fitting. Oh my god. Well, hello. I'm a vlogger. How are you doing? I told you I'd be back, didn't I? I told you I'd be back. What's this? Mind the step, why don't you mind your fucking business? 
How are you doing? Are you happy I'm back? Did you cause that book to fall over before? Because that was terrifying. That was so scary. What the hell was that pendant? But like, why did the voice go funny there? What? What in the world? Pendant. Okay. Pendant. What does that mean? Do you want me to find a pendant? Okay, let me know. Did you or did you not push over the book? I mean, I don't think you did. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think that just happened on its own. These things happen, you know? I'm not one to blame other people. I can't believe I'm in a church on my own, by myself. Wow, look at the shadow that casts. Wow. Is there anyone here with me in this church? Please feel free to communicate. You're glowing, babes, you're glowing. Elizabeth. Oh, oh my God, that was terrifying. Elizabeth, okay. Elizabeth, um, nice to meet you, Elizabeth. What's this? This is Mary A. Jewett. Okay, that's not you, Elizabeth. But Elizabeth, you must have visited here at some point, right? You must have been here, Elizabeth. Do you want me to see if I can find you? I'm sure I saw a few graves with Elizabeth when I went looking for Dorothy's grave. So, yeah. I can look for you later, if that's okay, Elizabeth. How did you die? Can you let me know how you died? It's certainly gone quiet now. Danger. Danger, oh my God. Where? You were back. Yeah, I'm back. Oh my God, yes, I'm back. Oh my God. Uh, yes, I'm back. Uh, okay, can I flip the camera? Oh crap, the, light, the light's going off. No, oh no, come on. Oh my God, there we go. Uh, yeah, the light's going on and off. Am I in danger? I am back, yes. I'm back. I was here yesterday. Oh my god. Guys, honestly, I do believe this app. I'm telling you right now. I believe it. I was sitting in my room in the inn and nothing came through. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't just throw words at you. It doesn't just throw words at you. It Something affects the magnetometer. Married! Oh my god. Oh, the way that just... Oh, my freaking heart. Is this... Like Curse. Oh my god, you're just spitting things out now, aren't you? Oh, uh, okay, married, curse, okay, okay, married, curse. Um, were you married here? I also know that there were like some like pagan, I think pagan witchcraft or things happening here too. So that probably happened like on these grounds, right? Like long, long, long ago. Long, long, long ago, I'm sure there was. Married, curse. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, is that you? Were you married? Were you a witch? Oh my God, the lights keeps going on and off. Oh my God. Oh. Scratch. 
Scratch! Oh my god, no, please don't! <laughs> don't scratch me, please. Don't scratch me. Uh, uh, oh no, come on! Oh no, the light, the light's gone off. Oh my god, the light's gone off. Oh my god. <sighs> okay, the light keeps going on and off. I swear, I'm not doing anything to it. It's just not a reliable light, apparently. Right, okay, scratch. Um, uh, please don't do that. Boundaries. Boundaries. And anyway, a lot of the ghosties I meet seem to be quite horrible to me. A lot of them bully me, including the one I spoke to last night who called me idiotic and stupid. Let's not do that, okay? Let's be friends. Imagine all the people. I don't actually know the next line. <laughs> it isn't hard to do. I don't know if that's the right words, but oh my God. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion too. Let's go a little bit further up. Living room. Living room? Whew. Did you use this as your living room? Your living space maybe? Are you one of the monks who used to work here? Well, I mean, if you're Elizabeth, probably not. I do believe all of the monks that got murdered by the raiders were all men. <laughs> Why was that? Oh my God. What was the first thing there? Where always? Are you always here? Are you always here? This is, there's been a lot of responses. A lot of responses here. I'm scared to go up here, I'm not gonna lie. Should I go behind the curtain? <sighs> Guys, why the hell am I here by myself? Clarissa did not explain this. Why did you come? Why did I come? Honestly, I wish I knew. I do, I wish I knew. <sighs> Just here for a good time, Anna. Nothing wrong with that. I told him. Oh my God. The... You told me what? You told me that I was in danger, yes. You told me I was in danger. You said I've come back, I have. What am I in danger of? Or are you just- Pray. Pray. Oh my God. Doomed. Doomed, oh my God, I got doomed yesterday too. Am I doomed? Am I cursed? Have I been scratched and now I'm doomed? Am I in danger? Oh no, the light went off again. Come on, come on. Love? Oh my God, come, stay on. Oh my God, stay on. Oh my God. Oh God, it, it keeps going off. No. Right. Okay, no. Oh my God. Oh my God, guys, I don't think I can stay here much longer. Oh my God. Uh, okay, yeah, the, the light's not working too well. Oh my God, stop. Stop. Oh my God. Right, what was that? Did it say love? I wish I had some, honestly. Been single all my life. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Right, I think I'm ready to come out of here now. Oh my God, stop, stop. Oh my gosh. Oh God, please. There we go, okay. okay. Nothing's there, okay. I think I'm ready to turn the lights back on, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very ready to turn the lights back on. I don't know why it's scary in the dark, but it just is. Criminal. Was a criminal brought here? Oh crap. Oh come on. Oh come on. There we go. Was a criminal brought here? 
Wow, there have been so many words brought through. Thank you so much for talking to me. Even though I'm literally frightened. I'm so frightened right now. Oh my God. Okay, I think it's ready to turn the lights back on. Don't you think so? I think, I think you're right. But mama, I'm in love with a criminal. They didn't say I couldn't sing. Oh my God, thank God. Thank God. I'm starting to rethink doing the graveyard. I'm not gonna lie. Not with this unreliable piece of trash. Oh, well, that was kind of scary. That was so scary. Literally, I was just standing. Where am I pointing? Standing. Oh, I was- Scream. No, thanks. No, thanks. I'm not going to do that. Dig. Dig. Where am I digging? something affecting my mobile phone. Why are you speaking like that? You don't understand what, make me understand. Make me understand, what am I not understanding? Please let me know, what, what do I not understand? Do I not understand the actual history here? Do I not understand how all of those monks died here? What don't I understand? Do I not understand the danger I'm in? Because I'm starting to get the picture. Okay, after what came through on the ghost tube app before, I don't want to risk going to the graveyard anymore. I really don't. I don't want to be in danger. I don't want to get scratched. We're going to do one last experiment. I'm going to do my ghost tube lens, which I previously did a 30 East drive. So I will leave all the links and stuff down below so you can find out more about what these apps do and what they are and how they work. Because I usually do mention it in nearly every video, so... I don't want to repeat myself. What I love about ghost tube lens as well is that it removes all of my other senses and I just have to focus on what I see. So <laughs> if anything comes up behind me, please shout, let me know. I don't want to get murdered tonight. I will be leaving after this, I promise. I don't want to be here any more than you do, okay? Let me know if there's anything you want to let, like tell me, like show me. Show me who you are, show me what happened here, and if these are the white monks of Blanchland who lost their lives, then, oh my god, I'm getting friggin' Instagram notifications. I wasn't even getting any reception in here, now I'm getting Instagram notifications. Now is not the t time or place. And they did it at my birthday dinner. I don't even know if this is probably the best place to do this. I'm just sitting on the floor, back to the front door, just as any typical horror movie character would do. Oh, something's coming through. Something is coming through. I see lots of fire in mountains. This looks like hell. I'm not gonna lie. I think you're showing me hell. That's kind of scary. That's kind of scary. Is this where you are? Is this where I'm going because I'm homosexual? Please let me know. Give me a sign. Move something. Well, thanks for showing me that. Uh, how often do you think of the Roman Empire? I feel really weird right now. I probably look it too. I again don't really know 100% how it works, but it works. It showed me something at 30 East Drive that was so relevant that it actually kind of scared me. Just how relevant it was. <coughs> Pardon me. Are you going to show me anything else? Is this Elizabeth? Elizabeth, do you want to show me anything? Do you want to show me where you grew up? Do you want to show me more of Blanchland? More of the Abbey? Do you want to show me who knocked the book over? Was that you, Elizabeth? Were you trying to warn me? To get me out of here because there is danger? Can you show me heaven? Show me heaven, cover me. Oh, 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 oh. 
Show me heaven, please. You showed me hell, now show me heaven. Do you have any requests? I'll sing anything you want. Apart from imagine, because I apparently don't know the words. Imagine there's no countries. I wonder if you can. Oh, someone's coming through. Oh, Elizabeth, is this you? Elizabeth, is this you? Is that a... Are you in a graveyard right now? Elizabeth, is this you in a red dress looking at graves? Are you looking at your grave? I can't really see the image 100% amazingly. I'd have to look at it after, but... Oh my God, thank you so much. Is this where you're buried? Are you in the graveyard right now? You kind of look a little bit Handmaid's Tale, not gonna lie. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for showing me that. Do you think I should go to the graveyard after this? I think I still have time before I have to give the key back to the Lord Crow Arms. I think I still have time. But thank you for showing me that. Do you think I should go to the graveyard? Elizabeth, are you still with me? Do you want me to come to you in the graveyard? Can you give me a sign if that's what you want? Because I will absolutely do that for you. If you need me to. Getting pins and needles here. <laughs> Starting to eat a pee again. I'm gonna need a pee. This has been like a really scary night. This is probably up there with like how scared I've been. I've never been in a church by myself before, after hours and in the dark. So definitely one for the books. Oh wait, something's coming through. I was just about to stop it there, but something's come through. Is that a moon? Like a fairy blue sky in in the moon? Like a fairy yellow moon? Oh, lovely. Is that a hillside too? That's a very pretty image. That's a nice one to end on. Thank you for that. I want to need the light to leave anyway. And the ghost tube light is good enough. So I need to turn the lights off and go, essentially. All the lights are off. Let's leave this joint. Bye. It was nice meeting you. Bye, Mr. Monk. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit scary. Even just getting to, oh my God, there's a spider. Oh wait, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Yeah, there was a spider on there. But yeah, it's scary getting even to the front of the church. Now that I'm here, maybe I could just quickly nip into the graveyard, just quickly, just to see if Elizabeth did want me to find her grave. Heaven, I, I said before, show me heaven. I'm in a graveyard, literally, heaven. Oh my God, this is actually scary. Oh my God, what am I doing? I don't have a, a proper light. Oh, I've got my red light. Me. Me, oh my God. Am I, am I looking for you? This is the only light I have, I'm afraid. Dead. Oh my god, you're dead. I'm so sorry. 
I am so sorry. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna go too much further because this is actually terrifying me. I know. You know, you know it's terrifying me. Do you think I'm gonna be okay? Elizabeth, I think you might have wanted me to come, but I'm a little bit too scared. I'm a little bit too scared. I don't think I can go any further, I'm afraid. I said no. Like, you've said no for what? You said no for, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't do it. What, no as in, I can't leave? I'm sorry, but it's just way too scary. It's way, I, I want to, I'm too scared. I'm too scared. Okay, I'm scared. Where are you? Dad. Oh my god, stop. This is too, too active. I'm sorry, I need to go, I need to go. It's too scary. Absolutely not. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, I have made it back to the Lord Crew Arms alive. I honestly think this was probably my scariest night so far in any of the haunted locations. I mean, that cabin though, there was something about that cabin, but I felt genuinely scared in that church and graveyard. So I'm planning on reading more subcutanean and Gabby is currently doing Patreon sprints, so I'm going to watch those. I also need a pack. I cannot believe that I'm going to be checking out in the morning. This is my final night. I'm so sad about it. I think it'll take me a few hours before I can get to sleep tonight. <laughs> I also want to call my haunted location series a name. Like, I don't have a proper name for them. What do we think about Gavin Goes Ghosty? What do we think about that? Because I'm thinking of, you know, Debbie Does Dallas. Have you heard of that? You've probably seen it. But Gavin Goes Ghosty. Could work. <laughs> I'll take any and all suggestions. Guys, I'm all packed and I'm ready to go. I'm so sad. I am so sad. It's been so amazing here. Even though I genuinely think last night was the scariest night of doing these kinds of videos. But I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it. I did manage to get to part two of Subcutanean. I'm on page 119. I've done a really good job of this, but it means that I won't be able to finish it in this vlog, but I do want to finish it within the next week or so. So do stick around. I will try and review this in a different video if you want to check that out. But I'm liking it so far. I really am. I love the wackiness. There is so many eerie things happening and it's taken a turn that I, I can't explain. I don't love the writing style and I've noticed a few spelling errors and grammatical errors and things like that. But other than that, if you're just reading for enjoyment, which I'm trying to, I'm trying to just read more for enjoyment than be critical of anything. And it's kind of working. I'm seeing through that and I'm just enjoying the story. I swear the characters are dumb though. The characters are so dumb. But that's fine because their stupidity is helping me and I can't even judge. I'm the one who went to a church by myself last night. I'm the one who went into a graveyard after a ghost said danger. Who am I to judge? I am liking this. I only have less than 100 pages left, so I will get it done at some point. But it is time to check out the Low Crow Arms and to check out of this haunted village. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below. What did you think of the vlog? Is there any ghostly mysteries that you want me to try and figure out? Is there anything you saw in the video? Anything at all, let me know down below. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for making this even possible with their support and my One Piece channel members. If you would like to join my Patreon or my One Piece channel membership, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.